But now we talk about the issue of mask mandates. We've seen what can happen when people come together with face coverings. We want to give people more confidence to shop safely and enhance protections for those who work in shops. Both of these can be done by the use of face coverings. You could literally kill someone because you didn't want to wear a mask. I'm convinced that the benefit of wearing a mask clearly is there. Now, I want to make clear, I'm not telling anyone not to wear a mask. That's not what we're here for. Instead, I want to move beyond hyperbole and focus on what the latest science actually tells us. Now, we've heard for months that wearing face coverings, even homemade ones, cloth ones, is a selfless thing to do, and it's even a patriotic duty, which I have to say sounds pretty cool, and it even sounds like a unifying thing. Uh, the emotional argument is, is really wonderful, but again, what about the actual data? Now, consider the following from the very uh, medical journals and organizations that we're led to believe are infallible. A 2015 study recruited healthcare workers from hospitals in Hanoi, Vietnam, and examined the benefits of cloth masks used in the healthcare setting and then measured flu and flu like virus transmission. Well, the results may surprise you. The rates of all infection outcomes were highest in the cloth mask arm. Penetration of cloth masks by particles was almost 97%, and medical masks? 44 percent. Now, this was a randomized controlled trial of more than 1,600 healthcare workers and had this stunning conclusion. The results caution against the use of cloth masks. This is an important finding to inform occupational health and safety. Moisture retention, reuse of cloth masks, and poor filtration may result in increased risk of infection. Hmm, okay. Well, what about the World Health Organization? I'm sure they recommend masks. Well, just go to the WHO website where they say there is limited evidence on wearing a medical mask by healthy individuals and households, in particular those who share a house with a sick person or among attendees of mass gatherings may be beneficial as a measure of preventing transmission. At present, there is no direct evidence on the effectiveness of universal masking of healthy people in the community to prevent infection with respiratory viruses, including COVID-19. Ah, oh boy. Ooh, uh -oh. <laughs> hmm. Then there's the gold standard itself, the CDC. Now, back in January, it recommended against masks, and Dr. Fauci repeated that guidance in March. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. Now, Fauci recently explained his mask flip. He's now in favor of them, saying those comments initially were motivated by his concern for saving masks for healthcare workers. Facebook, by the way, I found this out today, now flags the old interview with Fauci as false information. But he sure seemed convincing. But that's not all. An April study published in Nature seemed consistent with the old Fauci as well. It measured and compared viral shedding in the coughing of 111 participants, some wearing masks, some not. The results? Among the samples collected without a face mask, we found that the majority of participants with influenza virus and coronavirus infection did not shed detectable virus in respiratory droplets or aerosols. For those who did shed virus in respiratory droplets and aerosols, viral load in both tended to be low. Wait, what? what? <laughs> the majority of confirmed coronavirus infections without a face mask didn't shed detectable virus in respiratory droplets or aerosols? And for those who actually did, the minority, there was very little virus present? Okay, wait, it gets better. The major limitation of our study was the large proportion of participants with undetectable viral shedding and exhaled breath for each of the viruses studied. We could have increased the sampling duration beyond 30 minutes 
to increase the viral shedding being captured, but apparently people didn't want to do that. So again, let me just explain this. Over the space of 30 minutes, they were unable to capture any viral shedding in a large proportion of participants with confirmed known infections. <laughs> again, what? Indeed, they go on to explain that perhaps forced coughing, forced coughing might have helped. Forced coughing? So, so the issue, as is explained in this study, is that non-coughing or sneezing people are by and large not shedding virus in their ordinary breath. If they're coughing, well, of course, that's a different story, of course. Someone who is actively sick is, well, you know, they're actively sick. But especially now, many coronavirus infections are not symptomatic for cough. And among those actively sick but not coughing, they had great difficulty in this study finding virus expelled under lab conditions. And, and, and lab conditions has extremely sensitive equipment. Again, these are people who were actively sick and had a fever. So, so. So much for the theory of asymptomatic shedding of infectious virus out of one's mouth or nose. By the way, the entire premise on which the mask mandates are predicated. Do you see or smell or hear a problem here? There's conflicting information, scientific findings on mask use. And masks on kids? Well, it's hard to see how any of that should be the new normal given reported low levels of infectivity and infectiousness of children. Again, I'm not discouraging anyone from wearing a mask, but the world is full of experts who got big issues wrong, isn't it? Before Americans are forced to accept new restrictions on their freedoms, or even be shamed or even beaten up for not complying with these mandates, shouldn't state legislators hold hearings and discuss the findings that I just brought you tonight? Then they should pass actual laws about masks, or social distancing, all of it, that can withstand judicial scrutiny. We must insist on all of this. Demand to see all of the science behind the lockdowns, social distancing, and the masks. Otherwise, don't be surprised if you lose your pre-COVID way of life for the rest of your life. And that's the angle.